The Harrier GR7 is probably the most fun I've had at top tier in a very long time. On paper, this plane really shouldn't be that good. You have a subsonic 11.0 uh, aircraft, doesn't even have an afterburner, can't, re can't break the speed of sound, and only has four air-to-air -air missiles. So how does this sound fun to anybody at all? And well, that's probably the reason I have so much fun in it is just because it's very underestimated. When you see a Harrier, when you're in something like an F-14, you're really not going to worry about it that much. It's not fast, and it bleeds energy extremely quickly. Yeah, it has the funny 15G turn that everybody's freaking out about, but this lasts all of about 3 seconds probably at most. 1 to 2 turns at 15G, sure. And then after that, you're absolutely out of energy and you can't do it anymore. And on the same side of the coin, you're completely defenseless once you've done that hard of a pull for any length of time because you're out of speed and of course if you're out of speed you're going to be a pretty easy target. The VTOL is kind of a gimmick. I mean it'll help your turn radius a little bit, well quite a bit really, in a dogfight but that just makes you lose speed even more. The thing is though, you're going to get people to overshoot if you're using your VTOL. If you're turning well, all that kind of thing, being slow is sometimes the best thing about the Harrier. And because, like I said, pretty much everything is going to end up overshooting you as long as you can avoid the incoming fire. And with four AIM-9Ls, now we're getting to the good part of the plane, the four AIM-9Ls really do not care about flares on a lot of planes when launched from rear aspect. And of course, if they're overshooting you, you're probably going to be launching on them from rear aspect. The F-14 sure as shit is not going to be flaring the AIM-9L, even if it cuts the afterburner, even if it bops as many flares as it possibly can, even if, if it throttles down to say 0%. The other great thing about this plane though is the guns. You see a pretty wild shot on screen right there. Their reversal looked pretty nice and all my shots ended up connecting. I shot him when he was like what 0.7 kilometers away or something like that. That is a pretty far shot and unless you have like a Vulcan you're not going to be hitting that really at all and even with the Vulcan it is a pretty once in a while reversal to be able to do that. However. As much as I'd like to be able to take credit for being able to hit that in the Harrier, it ultimately comes down to the guns. On the screen to the left here, I'm going to throw up the stats for the Vulcan 20mm high explosive rounds with a velocity of 1030 meters a second. This is pretty much one of the highest velocity guns in the game. Uh, and it is extremely easy to aim. This is pretty well known. Now let's pop up the stats for the Harrier GR7's 25mm Aiden ammunition. We have Armored Piercing, High Explosive, and HVAP. The Armored Piercing, High Explosive has a velocity of 11, or 1070, excuse me, 1070 meters a second, and the HVAP has a velocity of 1400 meters per second. Half of your rounds in this belt are going 40% faster than the Vulcans. This means your range is going to be really good range in the sense that it's going to be pretty easy to hit very long range shots comparatively uh, amongst other cannons. And this also means that head-ons are going to be extremely deadly too because you're going to be able to shoot much sooner and much more accurately than somebody with say a 30mm a 30 millimeter DEFA, uh, GISH-23 and even the Vulcan considering your 40% faster velocity. The damage is pretty adequate. Uh, the F-14 unfortunately struggled to kill that Mirage F-1. He does leave a very vulnerable and easy target for me though. I'm able to one-tap him with my last six belts. That's nice and all, but it really just shows that the guns actually do damage, or at least these belts do damage despite being all armored piercing rounds. You're not just having consistent uh, over-penetration to where you're just getting hits and not really doing any damage. No, uh, they're actually pretty good in the damage department. So yeah, the guns are nice and all, but I'm going to be honest, that four kill game you saw with just cannons, yeah, it doesn't really happen very often. It was just a lucky clip I got, and it just so happens to showcase how the velocity of the guns can make shots that you otherwise would think are extremely difficult, not so difficult anymore. But looking at how we're usually going to be getting kills in the Harrier GR7, and it's just the AIM-9L. The AIM-9L has received a buff, as I said in the last video, I think. Uh, the 30G is actually 30G now. It really does feel like it pulls pretty hard, and this is much needed. It tracks well, it doesn't constantly overlead like it used to, and really they are one of the most deadly missiles in the game now. And like I alluded to in the beginning of the video, it does not really care too much about flares. There's a lot of planes that if you get a launch with the AIM-9L in rear, rear aspect, they're just dying. There's nothing they're going to be able to do about that. Uh, mainly so the F-14, but you know, if people aren't cutting afterburner, there's absolutely no chance they're going to be flaring it. 
And while it's pretty easy to flare frontal aspects still, like most all aspect missiles, really all all aspect missiles, if it's an F-14, he is still really going to have to work to flare that AIM-9 LOA, even in frontal aspect. Another really big thing that I find super annoying about the GR-7 that makes it actually somewhat lethal in an Air RB match is the fact that it gets 700 countermeasures, and I personally just use only flares because I play this thing low altitude. If I'm going to be dodging a SAR missile, I'm going to have to notch the radar because they're undoubtedly in pulse Doppler mode if I'm low altitude and they have a lock on me. So the chaff is pretty much useless to me given my play style. I'm not saying don't take the chaff. I'm just saying that I find bringing 700 flares a lot more useful because I can just turn on my periodic countermeasures and pretty much be immune to a missile launch because more than likely it's going to get pre-flared and anybody that turns on a missile seeker is probably going to end up inadvertently locking my flares. So you can do this if you have a mixed countermeasure as well, it's just not going to last as long. And on top of having it set to periodic the entire time I'm in a fight, I also like to manually mash my flare key if somebody actually does manage to get a missile launch at me and in the air. This just never gonna hit me. I have 700 countermeasures. I may as well just spam my flare key whenever I see a missile because I'm literally never going to run out in an actual RB game. I have never ran out up until this point, and I have used the Harrier probably roughly 30, 40, maybe 50 games even by now. So a quick just overall summary of everything we've been over with the Harrier before we start talking about actual gameplay for the rest of the video. Well, on paper, like I said, this really should not be a good top tier plane, and against competent, uh, aware opponents, it's really not going to be doing a whole lot unless they're in something that really is just going to say bye-bye whenever they see a 9L. Something like an F-14, for example, if you manage to, to get a 9L lock on them, there's nothing they can do about it, and they're just going to have to die. But for most of the other top tier jets that can still manage to flare the 9L as long as they cut their afterburner and spam out some flares, the Harrier GR-7 really doesn't impose that much of a problem on them. Uh, yeah, it's going to be annoying to deal with. Yes, you do have to look around for that 9L pretty actively. However, at the end of the day, it is still a Harrier. It's going like 200 kilometers an hour slower than literally everything else on the battlefield, which at times can work to your advantage, but somebody that knows what they're doing can really abuse the fact that you are so slow. You lose energy extremely quickly, and they will gun your floating ass out of the sky. Your gun, your flares, and your 9L is pretty much the only thing you have going for you, so you need to be able to use those rather effectively. Now let's get into some actual gameplay here. We go head on immediately with the F4E because I know I can outrange his Vulcan. We narrowly squeeze the trigger off in time to evade the incoming fire. We did see tracer rounds go across our screen. That's a little bit lucky, but it was perfect timing. Now I'm trying to stay low and kind of right down the middle of the map because as we all know in top tier everybody kind of just takes off and goes left and so by going down the middle of the map I'm going to be really on them in the beginning of the game and hopefully below them to where they're not seeing me and I'll have some nice flanking shots hopefully by surprise. The A7E is well suffering as you would expect an A7E to do in Era B. There are missiles falling from the sky absolutely everywhere, but none of them are directed at me, so I'm not really worried about it. And I have the six o'clock of several planes in front of me. The F-14, who I know the 9L is going to hit because it's an F-14. We look at the Sayu, notice he's popping flares, so we wait on him, shoot another F-14, and now that the Sayu is probably not paying as much attention, and he's not, we end up connecting with him too. Now in the heat of the moment and the excitement, I had forgotten to turn my periodic flares on. I could have died while I was looking at the enemies in front of me. Thankfully, nobody was there just yet, but now they are. And there is a angry MLD behind me as well as another 21 bis Sayu. So they have R60s. I'm not too concerned about it. I don't have an afterburner, though I am pretty hot for, you know, not having an afterburner. This plane has some pretty hot engines and there's four exhaust nozzles. The, R the IR signature is pretty large. We try to get a reversal on the MLD, don't manage the shots, and now I'm just trying to run away because I have quite a few enemies behind me and no teammates really that are in position to help. The F-14 over there gets taken up by the MLD, probably was not able to flare the incoming missile, and again, just still running. I had cut my recording because I thought that was the end. I'm not going to showcase me just getting chased down and dying. I just showed the clip of the 9Ls, and that was probably going to be it. 
Unfortunately for the enemy team, they are not able to hit me. And this is in large part due to the fact that I just have infinite countermeasures. They have a very difficult time and really impossible time shooting some of their close range IR missiles at me. They could be using their guns, though they just rather use their missiles on the other targets that are behind me, my last teammates of the match, and they are going to get taken down. And I'm just now noticing the chronic stuttering of this clip, probably because it was processing the one I had just saved, so I apologize for that. Hopefully it goes away soon. The MLD pulls up and around, he's going to overshoot, he doesn't want to put himself in front of any possible 9Ls or my guns, and there's also a teammate that he can go for. Unfortunately, there is a second MLD that ends up team killing him. That is massive for me, I really appreciate that. I probably would not have lived had there been the two MLDs and the MiG-21 BIS, but now there's only two enemies behind me, and this is a lot more doable at least for getting back to base. I have no ammo and no missiles, so I can't fight my way back, I just have to keep my flares on and evade any incoming fire if at all possible. I debated several times, do I want to go try to pretend like I'm still dangerous and maybe be able to save the, save the F4E, maybe he'll get a slight window of breathing room and be able to get himself out of there. But before I had finally decided I was going to try that, they end up taking him down and now I'm one versus three in F4E and MLD and the Bisayu. Vasayu is air braking and bleeding speed to stay on my 6, this is a great idea for him, he should by all means have me dead here, he unfortunately gets taken out by a Roland right as he loses his wing. The plane I'm in does pull 15 G's, but not when I'm going 600 kilometers an hour IS. Like I said, the plane bleeds energy extremely quickly, that 15 G turn does not happen as often as other people might lead you to believe, it's actually pretty rare, you have to be going a very specific speed window to be able to do that. If you are at that speed window and you can't pull the 15 G's, that's not going to last very long because your energy is going to go away instantly when you are pulling that hard. So the MLD had enough. He didn't want to get rolling it either. So I'm able to land, repair, rearm. I take off. I pop an Avenger order. The F4E and the MLD are taking off on the airfield. I climb up to uh, above 4,500 is the minimum you have to be to not be getting shot by SAMs vertically as long as you're straight above the airfield. You can dive down and be completely uh, free of any incoming fire from the SAMs. The M247s are going to shoot at you, but as long as you're not flying in a straight line, they're not gonna kill you. And the 9Ls are refusing to care about the F4E's flares. However, the MLD, it is single engine. However, when I shoot that close, he's not gonna be flaring that away. That's the Harrier GR7 for you guys, probably my favorite plane of the patch. It is good fun, even though it's not really the best on paper, technically but I think you will enjoy it. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you later.